How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here, right here, right now. It's raining outside unfortunately, so what I wanna do is an inside review. And this one, I've been trying to figure out how to approach it because I got this 4K action camera from Ekin. This is the 4K H6X action cam, waterproof, image stabilized. Did I forget anything? Oh, it's also $110 on Amazon. And it seems almost too good to be true. And I so want to pit it against a GoPro, but of course we know GoPros are like four times as expensive, but they are kind of asking for it with this packaging. Let's see what it's all about, do some unboxing. Um, the packaging is a little bit scuffed because I've already done so uh, and done some testing myself, but here we go. There it is, and it's waterproof housing. Uh, it's kind of the same four factor as maybe a GoPro 4, not the five or six though. They say that the waterproof housing is good up to 30 meters. I'm no scuba diver, so I'm gonna have to trust them on that. There we go. Ekin HXS 4K action cam. It's got a nearly one inch size uh, display screen here for status, but it also has a screen on the back. It's gonna give us our menus, but it's also gonna show us what we're seeing at any given point in time. Um, we have a, a Wi-Fi button there on the side. We have our power and our modes button there. We have our record and shutter button there. Looks like we also have a speaker. On the side we have our HDMI and our micro USB. Plus we have a place for our SD card. Now I have one in there right now because I was using this earlier, but it does not come with a micro SD card, so you're gonna have to buy your own. But I'm using a 64 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme like I do for all my other uh, drones and action cams. Holding our uh, power button there, got a little chime, Ekin. Now, I do not see this weird uh, refresh rate thing going on in real life. I think this is the shutter speed or the refresh rate of my camera. But here it is on the back. Uh, we have uh, our video mode right there. We have how much time and space we have left for recording. We're already preset for 30 frames per second at 4K, so I'm gonna start this. Here we go, this is apparently 4K at 30 frames per second. This is as good as you're gonna be able to hear me using this uh, in built-in mic in the camera. Now, it does not shoot 24 frames per second, rather it shoots 25 frames per second. So this is a European, or perhaps you could consider this to be a Chinese uh, model with the PAL a video format as opposed to NTSC, which we're used to in North America. You can see we're still recording, but the screen has turned off and that's just to save power. So you get your shot set and then the camera will turn its screen off, but it's still gonna be a recording with the video. Now we're nearing the two minute mark on recording. I just recharged this battery not too long ago and uh, we're already not full anymore on the battery indicator. So hopefully that's not gonna be a huge issue. We'll see just how far this thing drops in terms of percentage over the course of a couple minutes. Looking at the menu here, we have our burst photos, we have our time-lapse video, time-lapse photo, our video, photo, and our settings. Uh, so let's see what settings look like. And so we're traversing the menu by just pressing our two buttons here, the, the shutter button and this mode button. Uh, so we have video resolution. Let's see what resolutions we have access to. We have our Ultra HD at 30 and 25. The EIS means that that is electric image stabilized. So it looks like we have access to 25 frame per second EIS and our 30 frame per second is not EIS. We have our 2560 over 1440 and then our 1920 by 1080. We do have our 60 frame per second video uh, at 1080 so we can slow that down uh, by half if we want to. Photo resolution. Just one? Okay. Just one photo resolution. 4320 by 3248. For exposure? Okay. Basically just pick different exposure values here. Uh, you can't actually select like shutter speed or ISO it looks like. Timestamp exposure, burst mode, uh, time lap photo interval, and time lap video interval. Now one of the first things I'm gonna do is turn off the sound indicator. I'm not a fan of this beeping. There we go. All right, just clicks now, I don't mind that. So that menu is pretty simple. A little on the clunky side just because you have two buttons. I, I would love to have a third button to traverse that a little easier, but uh, that's all right. Oh, there's our playback. So the built-in speaker's really tinny. At least you know that you're getting audio recorded, but that's about it. You're not going to be uh, playing this back for people. And... Right now, I'm careful not to uh, cover any of the microphone. 
Yeah. I got a 64 gigabyte card in there. Looks like we got two hours and 30 minutes of 4K recording time. So that's awesome. They market this camera as uh, having 170 degree field of view. However, uh, having looked up other videos online and some people, some discussions talking about this, that's not actually true. People were getting more like 110 degree field of view uh, in 4K, especially with image stabilization on. Uh, you're just not going to get that 170 degree field of view. Um, I would bet between 140 and 110 would be your best bet here. So it comes with actually a surprising amount of uh, mounts and other things. First of all, this is probably my favorite. It's a little uh, collapsible mini tripod and it screws right into the frame, which it also comes with. This is not the waterproof frame. This is the regular frame, which the uh, little action cam would fit inside. So I'm gonna put that in there right now. That right there, that might be my, my favorite one. It also has some other little mounts and adapters that it comes with, like this uh, can be put on maybe a bike handlebar or something like that. Some sticky mounts, if you wanna put this on a, maybe a helmet like this one curved, or maybe this one straight, if you wanna put it on a smooth part of a skateboard or whatever. They also say that the uh, connection types here are compatible with GoPro mounts. I'm actually gonna use my GoPro Hero 5 Black with the mount that came with the Ekin to see if this really fits. Yes, it's true. The mounts are interchangeable. That's awesome. So if you don't like the mounts that it comes with it or you want to expand, um, get a car mount, something like that, looks like you can. You got your micro USB to USB charger along with a two battery charging hub there and you have your remote. And that was one of the selections we saw in the menu was uh, operation with a remote. So this can be used to take pictures or to take video remotely. Um, this they say is splash proof. Hey, there we go. Oh, that's a picture. There we go. All right, so we have our image. Not even that bad latency. Comes with an extra battery. So there's already one battery inside and it comes with the extra one. Uh, they're both 1050 milliamp hour batteries. They charge pretty quick. Okay, so I have auto settings across the board here and I'm seeing just how wide a field of view this is. So the GoPro, definitely a lot wider. I'm seeing a lot more of the room. I see the actual front door. I see the door to the kitchen a little more. Um, definitely see a lot more of the light. So yes, the, the field of view is narrower on the Ekin. So with electric image stabilization, that means that this does crop in a bit. And let's see how much we lose field of view when we simply turn on the image stabilization. Recording with image stabilization on 25 frames per second, 4K. All right, now recording at 30 frames per second with no image stabilization on. And yeah, we definitely got a lot of field of view back. So that's just one of those things. If you wanna use that image stabilization, it's gonna crop in on your image. That's just what's gonna happen. By the way, it also says we're down to 50% battery and I've had this on maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. So it looks like you're not gonna get a whole lot of recording time out of this, but you do have your extra battery and I'm sure you can buy extras of these as well. All right, let's go look at some of that footage I've shot with this thing in the past couple days.
This is 60 frames per second at 1080. It has image stabilization, but usually 60 frames per second on cameras like this looks pretty gross. But perhaps slowed down by 50%, we'll get a good image. I have no idea. Broke out our sweat in February. There you go. Woo. Well, I like it, honestly. It's responsive. The menu takes a little bit of getting used to. But aside from that, it's not a bad little camera for $110. The 4K doesn't look crystal clear. Yes, the, the resolution is 4K, but the pixel density and clarity is just not there. Um, you also get some noise in the image. The, the microphone isn't that great. The playback speaker isn't that great. The menu is kind of clunky. It gets hot when it runs. Uh, it's still warm, even now. With all that said, you have to remember the price. $110 on Amazon. Not that bad. And honestly, as a backup GoPro, a second GoPro, or maybe as an action cam, if you're trying to save a little bit of money, see my GoPro's turning on because it thinks I'm talking to it. Voice command. It has a waterproof housing. It has, you know, multiple batteries you can you can put in there. It can accept 64 gigabyte micro SD cards. GoPro mounts are interchangeable with its mounts. This might be a good secondary action cam for somebody or their primary action cam if they're trying to save some money. Not everyone's looking for a perfect, you know, ultra 4K special footage. Not even anyone can edit that footage on their computer. The audio isn't great, but a lot of us don't use the audio from our GoPro as our primary audio source anyway. A lot of it, a lot of the time the audio sounds like anyway, because you're, you're, it's an action cam. You're taking it in places where you wouldn't want to have a normal camera to be. I haven't tested the structural integrity of it. You know, I haven't ran this over with the van or something, but honestly, I recommend it. For what it is, for the price, you're getting a lot. And if you're willing to look past some of the clunkiness, um, and, and some of the, the underperforming features. Honestly, it's still worth $110 for sure. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Product link in the video description. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you already have one or if you're thinking about buying one, let me know uh, what your experiences are. Thanks for watching.